We are introducing a new segment here. Yahoo Finance has launched the YF Chart Book. It's a basket of approximately 50 charts from Wall Street analysts. The charts give vital insight to the U.S. economy and points to where it is going. We're kicking it off today with a look at luxury travel and what it tells us about recession, government grants, fraud, and the effect the pandemic has had on high and low-income earners. Danielle DiMartino Booth of Quill Intelligence created this uh, and can go into the details. So, Danielle, thanks so much for joining us today. First off, give us, uh, tell us what this chart signals uh, at a high kind of headline level. So I think, um, I, th- I think the background here is understanding what the employee retention credit is. It was created as part of the CARES Act and it was designed for smaller businesses who kept their employees on the payroll, who had their business interrupted in 2020, such that they could claw back up to $21,000 per employee when filing their 2020 tax return. That was extended and expanded greatly by the Biden administration with the first stimulus check that they signed in. Uh, It extended out to the first three quarters of 2021 and also uh, applied up to $26,000 per payroll taxes, including startups, startups that rose like a phoenix out of the ashes um, of the pandemic. And that is where I think the IRS has really started to combat a lot of the fraud that it's facing with this program to give you a a feel for the scope. Uh, About last year, about this time, we were talking about 15, maybe to 20 billion dollars a month uh in but by the time december rolled around claims were getting paid out to the to the effect of almost 26 billion a month in july we had 30 more than 30 billion dollars paid out in these income tax credits they're mostly going to the the top 20 percent of earners in america who are largely taking these proceeds these taxpayer dollars and splurging on fancy international travel So, Danielle, what do you think demand looks like from here on out? Is this something that you see carrying through the end of the year? Is this a trend that you see continuing into 2024? So it's interesting, um, even though the IRS has made several very public advisories saying that they're having trouble combating the fraud, uh, they have also said that they've got an equal backlog. They've they've processed about 1.1 million of these employee retention credit claims. They say that they've got an equal number on the other side, and there are very aggressive marketing campaigns, GetRefunds.com, InnovationTaxes.com, where they collect a large contingency fee to uh, file these claims. So at best look, we could p- potentially see $400 billion dollars go towards consumer spending, directly deposit it uh, into the accounts of, again, higher income earning Americans. And this is why we have not seen uh, a recession in 2023, in good part, in addition to other fiscal stimulus that's happening, given we know that the private sector is largely uh, pulled back from investing, and given we know that the other 80 percent of income earners are really struggling to make those basic necessity type of payments as they stare down the barrel of student loan payments uh, resuming on October the 1st. So this really is a story of the haves and the have nots, but a $400 billion a year run rate for U.S. consumption, that would come out to about a point and a half of GDP growth. It's a big number. Right. And Danielle, to your point, I mean, or one thing we want to keep in mind is often we we quote this uh, statistic about how much the consumer is responsible for the U.S. economy. And the consumer has certainly been propping up the economy, continuing to spend on experiences. And, you know, to your data point, uh, luxury travel. Do you see that having any kind of slowdown in the latter part of this year? Um, I do. We've gotten warnings from Alaska Airlines, Southwest Airlines, JetBlue was the most recent. Um, hotels are starting to slow as well, all domestically. So some of the lower, uh, lower paying type of travel we're really seeing get hit. Uh, and we're also seeing rejection rates among lenders. Uh, this is New York Federal Reserve data. We're seeing rejection rates go up very quickly whether you're talking about uh, a a U.S. household looking to take out a credit card or increase the limit on their credit card or buy a new car. So uh, you're putting up a a slide here that's very, very telling, and that's exactly what we've been hearing from a lot of these airlines. What they're not seeing domestically, they're certainly seeing internationally and international brick-and-mortar sales. Call it the Champs-Élysées effect. Mm. Uh, As a Mm. result of, of these government payouts has been extraordinary. The growth has been amazing. I've heard that from my friends in Europe. We're seeing tons of Americans. 
Daniel, when it comes to what the Fed could do, should do next, obviously, given your experience, prior experience at the Fed, just what's your assessment of this higher for longer policy, the restrictive policy that the U.S. economy faces and its ability to withstand the fact that we could be looking at much higher rates going into the new year? So, you know, we're, we're hearing from um, from Fannie Mae, we're hearing from others that that U.S. households are taking out home equity lines of credit at a greater pace. My goodness, that's a nine percent uh, borrowing rate. And yet the Fed intends fully on from what we've heard from Fed, Fed speakers in the last few days, potentially pausing here, but staying at these high levels into next year. And, and continuing to reduce the size of, uh, of the Federal Reserve balance sheet, which pulls liquidity out of the system. We've had a particularly busy few days on the bankruptcy front, whether you're talking about a hospital or uh, an airline company or yellow trucking, as we've seen. Um, but the bankruptcies are spreading out beyond a few sectors. And I think that that's really relevant and reflective of the Fed staying higher for longer, it costs more money to conduct business and or to refinance your debt, whether you're a corporation or a U.S. household. All right. Well, we will have to put a pin in our conversation there. Quill Intelligence CEO Danielle DiMartino, thank you so much for both being a part of this new segment, Why of Chart Books and Beyond. Thank you for having me. Got it.